In this question we have a rectangle to hexagon transition piece and they've given us a front view, they've given us a right view and they've given us a top view. Now with this transition piece you'll see here that for the question they've also asked us to use AB as the seam okay, that we're going to cut it along to go and do our development and I've gone and drawn out what was given Okay, and you'll see here that the top view, they gave a point S, which you had to go and construct a hexagon around. Go and have a look at another video that I'll post as to how to construct a hexagon around a specific point when the point's given on only one side. And then I've gone and drawn the given front view, and they didn't ask for the left view, but I've drawn it in any case just for explanation's sake. And then we've marked off where AB would be. Now, with this transition piece, the hexagonal top has been pushed all the way to this right-hand corner over here, which forms a flat surface over here and another flat surface on the right over here. And this flat surface on the right here, you can see that flat surface, okay, which from the left view, which would be seen over here, so uh, from your right view, which can be seen over here in this right view. And that flat surface over there is sitting straight up. Okay, it's represented by this line here in our top view. So from that point to there is this flat triangle, which you can clearly see in your right view over here. Now, that makes things a little bit more complicated because it creates a bit of an issue with all of the true lengths that you're going to need to be able to go and complete the development. So this first part video is just going and identifying the true lengths and finding all of the true lengths needed to then go and do the development of this transition piece. So to start with, with any transition piece we need to make sure that each of all of our surfaces have got triangles to be able to go and draw the transition. So there we have to identify any surfaces in these views where we don't have any triangles. Um, and the first one, of course, is this one over here in the top view. So we're gonna have to go and create a triangle here. Now it doesn't really matter as to which corners you use to create that triangle. I'm gonna use those two. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line in there to then break that surface up into two separate triangles. And then, the back flat surface over here would also need triang triangles in it, which is this shape here in our front view. So I'm going to go and draw in a triangle for that as well. Draw a line in to make two triangles there in our front view. Okay, so those two lighter lines there are lines that I've used to go and create extra triangles to be able to go and complete our development later on. So now we have to go and identify all of, the all of the lines that we need to find true lengths of. But before we do that, of course, we need a number. So I'm going to use letters, capital letters, for the corners of our rectangle. And numbers for each of the corners of the hexagon. And then I'm going to transfer that numbering into my front view. So that corner there will be... D comma C and this bottom corner here will be A comma B and then each of my top corners here that corner there is going to be 4 this corner will be 5 comma 3 that will be 6 comma 2 and then this of course will be labeled as 1 okay now we've done our labeling there we're now going to go and see which of our lines we need to find two lengths of, and I always mark those, okay, to be able to see, to be able to identify them later on. So any angled line, we are going to have to find a two length of. So this line 5D over here, okay, we're going to need to find a two length of it. Um, so I'm going to mark it with a single line, and we're also going to have to find the length of 6D, its true length. So I'm going to double line mark that one. We're also going to need to find the true length of A6. Okay, I'll use three lines to mark that one. It's a separate true length. We'll also need to find the true length of A1 and of B1. So I'm now going to use a different shape. I'm going to use a circle to indicate that one. I'll use a square to indicate that one. And then the other two lengths that we need here, we're going to, of course, need the true lengths of this line here from 4 to C. 
Okay, it's this angled line over there. Okay, uh, sorry, that one there. And then your angled line here from 4 to D, which will be this angled line here. Now, you won't have drawn this view, so we're still going to need to go and find these two, trings, two, two lengths, con construct them so we didn't have to draw that view. So I'm going to give those shapes as well. I'll give that one a triangle. You can clearly see a little triangle. And I'll give that one a tick. Okay, so we need two lengths for those. Then we have lines here from B to 2. Thankfully from B to 2 there's a true length of that in our front view over here because that's a face which is sitting okay, straight up on our vertical plane. So when it's flopped back down into this plane we can clearly see a true length of it from B to 2. So that line's true length we don't need. And C3 is true length we also don't need. It will be clearly visible here. And then, of course, the same thing with the, with the lines that would go from the base, okay, to go and do triangulation for this front shape. So that line that we included over here, from 2 all the way down to C there, that line would normally run from 2 to C there, and that line we're also not going to need the two length for. We'll be able to just read it straight off here. Okay, so those two links we've gone and identified, the ones we have to find, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven two links we need to go and construct. Okay, and our construction method is to go and identify one point which we want to use, okay, for each of our, each of our lines, okay, and I'm going to start with the one that's marked with a single line there, and it's attached to point five, so I'm going to use point five. And to start with, I'm going to take point 0.5 and I'm going to draw a light construction line to extend point 0.5 to the right there. And then I'm going to take my compass, place it on point 0.5, open up to D. And then I'm going to draw an arc till it hits that construction line that I drew, which makes it easy to be able to see where that arc turns. And then I'm going to take that point up, project it straight up into my front view. Okay, straight up into my front view. Okay, now that construction, doing that arc and then projecting up into the front view, we need to check which point we've actually projected. We've projected point D here up into the front view. Okay, and we've projected point D, so that means we need to go and join this up to point D, okay, in our front view. But, of course, because we projected point D, we're going to, and we need to go and find point D here in our front view, which of course is on the base. So I'm going to extend that baseline across, and where I extend that across, that point there, that is now our new point D, okay, and I'm going to call that D1. Mark that as D1. Okay, and then that point, of course, uh, well, needs to be joined up now to the point where we put our compass, which was on point 5, which is up here in our front view. Okay, so I'm now going to take my set square and I'm going to join our new point D up to point 5. And that line, which I'm now going to mark with a single line like that, okay, is now the true length of D5. So there's D5 there, it's true length D5 is now here in our front view. I've marked it with a single line because it's marked with a single line here so that I know which one it is when I need to do my development later. But just to recap that method one more time, I put my compass point on point 5, opened it up to point D, arced it up to a line which I drew horizontally from point 5 where it met with that line. I then projected that straight up and because I was projecting point D, I need to join it up with point D here in my front view. So I extended point D across where those two lines intersected. I then had to join that point to where I'd originally put my compass point to draw the arc, which was on point 5, which is up here. And I joined the two. That gives me the true length then of D5, which I then marked with my single line. Okay, so let's do the same with the rest. So my next one is going to be 6D. There's already a line projected for it, so I don't need to do that again. So I'm going to put my compass point in point 6, open it up to D. I'm going to project my arc up onto that line. 
and then I'm going to project that point where it hits and intersects the line straight up okay into my front view and now again I'm projecting point D so I'm going to have to go and find point D this is getting a bit messy now with my labels so I'm just going to mark that there so I can clearly see where it hits that line I'm not going to give it another D label okay so that point there and then I put my compass point now on point 6 be very careful to get confused here a lot of people go and put join it up to point 5 again up there but my compass point was placed in point 6 for this true length not on 5 so I've got to join that point D to point 6 here in my front view and that line I'm going to mark with a double line clearly because now that is D6's true length. Then I'll move on to the next one, on to A6. Okay, again, there's a, already a horizontal line here that I can use, which is projected from point 6. So I'm just going to place my compass point on 6. I'm going to open it up to point A, and I'm going to arc that up to meet with that horizontal line. I then take that point where it intersects the horizontal line, and I'm going to project that straight up okay, into my front view and because I'm going from projecting point A I'm going to extend point A here and I'm going to mark where it intersects with A and then I'm going to join that point up to where I put my compass which was in point 6 so I'm going to join that point now up to point 6 over there Okay, and then I'm going to mark it with three lines because that is now the true length of my line A6 which I mark with three lines and then next one A1 now I'm going to have to change where I put my compass so I'm also going to draw a horizontal line from one across and then I'm going to put my compass from point one I'm going to open it up to A and I'm going to make an arc from A to where it intersects with that horizontal line and then I'm going to project that intersection point up into my front view until it intersects with the horizontal line coming across there from A get a bit clearer Okay, so that's where it intersects with my horizontal line coming across from A and I put my compass point now not on 6 but I put it on 1 to draw that arc so I'm now going to join that point up with point 1 in my front view and that I'm going to mark with a circle because that was a1's mark here, so I know that that's A1's true length over there. Next one is B1. Same story again. Okay, for B1 I don't have to draw a horizontal line because the arc that I'm going to make is going to hit into that BC line. Okay, so... Oh, it won't hit into the BC line. I am going to need one. Okay, so... I'm just going to... Extend that one a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm going to place my compass point on 1 again and then the same story take it from 1 open it up to point B and now instead of drawing an arc upwards because I want this arc to meet with the horizontal line coming across from point 1 where I'm putting my compass point if I go that way uh, it's not quite it's going to get there all the way on the side over here so instead I'm going to go down I'm going to draw my arc down okay, to get it to that intersection point there and then again that intersection point with my horizontal line I'm going to project that up and I've now projected point B which is also on the baseline so I'm going to mark that there in line with B and then I'm going to join that to point 1 that's where I put my compass point originally so I'm going to join that with point 1 in my front view Okay, and that is then marked with my little square, which looks more like a rectangle. 
that is then the true length of B1. Okay, those have done all of those ones. Now I've just got these two side ones to do over here, C4 and D4. And I'm going to put my compass point on 4 for these. So I'm going to just draw a horizontal line through 4 there, which I'm going to use. And then I'm going to put my compass point on line 4. And I'm going to go and open it up to C. And draw an arc to meet up with the horizontal line. Then I'm going to project that up into my front view, join it up with a point in line with C, which would be there, and then I put my compass point in point 4, so I'm going to draw a line from that point to point 4, and that I'm going to mark with a tick, so that I know that it's C4's true length. Then for the next one, for D4, same thing. Okay, I'm going to take my compass point, place it on 4, Open it up to point D. Project that onto that same horizontal line, which I drew extending from point 4. And I'm going to project that straight up. And I've got to extend that horizontal line a little bit more, the one that's meant to be coming out from D. And because I'm projecting D, I'm going to make sure that I mark it in line with D. And then project a line from there to point 4 where I put my compass point. Okay, and then I'm also going to mark that. That was a triangle, so I'm going to mark it with a triangle there. So I know that that's my true length of D4. Okay, the last line that you would need a true length for here, of course, is going to be your seam. And your seam's true length, of course, is just going to be this straight line here, which you can see in this right view that I've drawn. But, of course, it's the same length over here in your front view as well. So the true length of the seam is quite easy. It's already given to us just by going and drawing out that front view. Simply because it's a point here in our top view, if you've got a point in the top view, the true length of any line which is seen as a point in the top view will be seen as a true length in our front view. So we'll just use that true length. So now we have all the true lengths we need. Please look at part two for the development.